When Business Jet Center decided to host our first annual charity golf tournament, we were so excited about the possibilities that came with that opportunity. Cat Clay and I went through a list of hundreds of deserving charities, but ultimately it came down to giving back to those who fight for our freedom and to their families who sacrificed so much. And we were thrilled to raise $20,000 for the very deserving charities that we selected, Wounded Warrior Project and Fisher House Foundation. We are so excited about being able to get involved in the community and give back and show people that we weren't just about airplanes, we're not just about selling fuel. We really do have a passion for people and we care for people and not just our customers, but for the people that are out there doing so much good in the world. We were able to tour the local Fisher House branch and it was mind blowing to see all the things that they provide for free to the families of soldiers that come back and are in the hospital and to see how much it helps those soldiers to have that support there and to have their family members there who wouldn't otherwise be able to be, able to be there without Fisher House. I just want to say thank you guys so much for being here today and taking time out of your busy schedule for two great causes. Thank you to the Wounded Warriors who reached out and you're able to play today and all the support that we've received, calls, emails, everything. Thank you guys so much. My name is Tracy Reed. I am uh, uh, a Texas Army National Guardsman originally, uh, joined in 1989, uh, served up until my medical retirement in June of uh, 2004. My name is Armando Garcia. I was with 3rd Battalion, 5th Marines. I was a combat medic um, with 81's mortar platoon back in Iraq in 2003. Michael Meyer, uh, yeah, joined the Marines uh, just out of high school in 2002. I was in Iraq 2003 uh, from February until September, Operation Iraqi Freedom. In 2003, I was in Kuwait, uh, getting ready for the invasion of Iraq uh, with the 1st Marine Division. We were a roundout battery for an active duty um, artillery uh, division out of Fort Hood, Texas. And when they were called up, we were called up along. My job, my MOS was 8404. I was a corpsman. Um, I joined the Navy as a, as a corpsman, thinking that I was never gonna go to war because it was the Navy. Mm -hmm. And um, after my school, um, they said I was gonna be stationed with the Marine Corps. Tell me a couple of your most memorable experiences. Basically, the whole five years. You know, I never knew what the Marine Corps was about, and uh, I never pictured myself with the Marines. Um, I mean, it was, I wouldn't have traded it for anything. It was the best experience. In AIT, it was uh, um, eye-opening experience. One of the terms that I'll never forget, so one of my drill instructors uh, saying was um, that um, your mother would tell you that you'd have bad days, she just didn't tell you you'd have them uh, 100 days in a row. When I was during the invasion of Iraq, it was a lot different than how it is now. We had no technology whatsoever. You know, we slept in, on the ground and fighting holes and such. You know, we didn't have phones or anything. I turned 21 in Iraq. You know, go figure. When the Warrior Project uh, supported uh, the wounded community, uh, at least early on, was through a backpack full of supplies. Um, sweatpants, t-shirts, you know, toiletries. A lot of the things that you take for granted um, that you, you don't get to s stop being injured uh, long enough to go pack your bags and have them come along with you. The uh, invasion of Iraq was uh, a life-changing you know, experience. Um, it's not too many people get to go through that, not only be in battle, but be in situations where you can bond with brothers in arms, uh, like that. The Brotherhood were so close, you know, they those guys had my back and I had theirs. It was on actually Veterans Day, oddly enough, 2003. Um, we were running the evening resupply 
uh, had made it to the fuel farm, had delivered the supplies, gathered you know um, stuff that we needed to take back, and were no more than two minutes outside the fuel farm when we were ambushed. They initiated the ambush with uh, improvised explosive devices. Um, it stopped the convoy, uh, and then they immediately began to um, fire on us uh, with small arms. Um, we exited the vehicle, began to return fire, and it was within a matter of seconds that a rocket propelled grenade was fired and glanced off of my vehicle, fortunately, and the shrapnel from the RPG, which didn't explode, by the way, or I wouldn't be talking with you, um, and the vehicle tore into the left side of my face, um, uh, took a couple of fingers off my hand, almost took my left arm, and, and um, uh, really took me out of the fight uh, immediately. Um, I was able to re uh, remain conscious, uh, communicate with um, uh, my uh, fellow uh, soldiers what I felt like I needed at that particular point. They were able to get me back to the fuel farm and uh, uh, the medical eva uh, evacuation came in and brought me to uh, uh, Baghdad Airport. And then from Baghdad Airport through uh, Lundstall, Germany, um, back to Brook Army Medical Center, all of which happened in about 72 hours. I was back in San Antonio. Not the best way to go home, uh, but it was it was certainly a quick way home. During that ambush, when you're there and you're still conscious, but you conscious but you're injured, what was going through your mind? Well, I, I you know, I don't, it's very surreal. In a combat theater, you you are trained and prepared for those instances. Um, but no amount of training and preparation can really prepare you for the real thing. And so the sh once the shock wore off, obviously the pain set in from the injuries. Um, but I do remember thinking clearly as I'm sitting, leaning against a, a, a wheel well of my Humvee uh, away from the fight, staring out at what was the most beautiful sunset I'd ever seen. Um, and thinking, you know, that I had done at that point I, everything I felt like I could as an American, as a father, as a husband. Um, and so it was, it was really a very peaceful, short period of time, um, but really gave me, I think, the strength that was necessary for the, the real fight that began um, with the recovery and the rehabil rehabilitation process. Were there any casualties as a result of that ambush? No, ma'am. No, I was the worst injured, and I consider myself very fortunate, uh, or our unit very fortunate, that that was in fact the case. Uh, all of the 110 soldiers that we took into country, um, aside from me, um, having gotten back earlier due to the injuries, uh, came back safe and sound. April 4th, 2003, just south of Baghdad, I was wounded. I had severe weakness in my right hand because I had a bullet go through it and I'm missing a bone. And I also had my humerus bone shattered, so I have a plate right here. Uh, so I couldn't do a lot of the duties that it required an infantryman to do. And so the Marines said, you know what, you're going to go, we're going to medically retire you. And so I got out in September 2004. We had a lot of firefights making our way up to Baghdad. Um, and on April the 4th, we ran into a lot of foreign fighters. They uh, demobilized one of our lead tanks. Uh, so basically, we're going up a road, right, into this village. They took out our first tank, which stopped the whole convoy. Well, that's when we dismounted and had to go into this field that's almost like a crop. It's lined with irrigation ditches, and they're all in this field. Unfortunately, I walked right on top of a guy that was in his fighting hole, and he popped out and unloaded his AK-47 on me. Thankfully, I was wearing my bulletproof plate, so two rounds hit that plate, stopped it. Four rounds hit me with both arms. At that time, I'm on the ground, and they shoots me a couple more times, shoots me through my foot. One through my, uh, my rear end, which a million dollar wound, thankfully just erased it. But eventually they got to and they killed them. Uh, thankfully I didn't have any vital injuries, but I did have a broken arm and some shrapnel on my face. So after the incident, it took me about six months before I was really on my own again and, you know, could walk. 
what's going through your mind? Uh, well, I thought I was going to die. There was no doubt in my mind, because I would originally been hit in the chest, and I knew I was hit in the chest. I didn't know that it my foot and stopped it. I kind of rolled me around and checked all my wounds, and said, oh, you know, I think I'll be able to stop all the bleeding, you know, I think you'll be okay. And you know, it's funny, it's kind of cliche and warm, you got guys going for their mother, but uh, I, I thought about my mom back home. So, uh, what is a typical day for you now? Uh, do you own this gun shop? Yes, uh, I own uh, actually two pawn shops in Fort Worth, and the name on the pawn shop is Purple Heart Pawn, and veterans are attracted to that. I've got just inches and inches of scars, you know, everywhere, uh, and you can see that, and you can say, oh, well, yeah, he was wounded with some guys mentally. Can't see that, so it's hard to put a, I guess, a value or put uh, compassion on it um, as easily as you can me or some guys that don't have limbs. You know? It makes it easier for us to go out and serve our country, knowing that we have people behind us willing to support us. I'm living proof that uh, the Wounded Warrior Project um, does make a significant impact on wounded veterans and their families. Uh, as far as donors, you know, thank you so much. It's a blessing to have those individuals donate to Wounded Warrior Project because you guys are helping us out. They're helping us out. They're lending a hand. They're saying, they're giving us the support that we need to continue and transition back into civilian life. I just want to say thank you again.